Okay, so question two considers uh, the reaction of cyclohexene with bromine to form a halogen alkane. So what you need to do here is draw and name the mechanism for the reaction, uh, showing all relevant dipoles and charges. And this is for five marks. This is quite a hefty question, so it's important that you include everything. Okay, so you've got an alkene reacting with a halogen. Okay, so this bromine molecule is non-polar, okay, because both atoms have the same electronegativity, so the electron pair is going to lie dead in the middle of the bond, okay, so it's purely covalent to non-polar molecule. However, when the proximity of this bromine molecule comes close to the uh, alkene, you'll see that this double bond is an area of high electron density, okay, and as such the electrons in this high region of high electron density in the alkene they repel the electrons in the bromine bromine bond and so they are closer they are pushed they are pushed away okay so you form a dipole so you get a delta positive on one of the bromine atoms and a delta negative on the other so what happens now is a similar reaction to what you saw in question 1 so this pair of electrons in the double bond attacks the slightly positive uh, bromine and then this bond breaks, uh, so that forms a new bond there, the first curly arrow, uh, showing the movement of electrons forming a new bond from the carbon to the bromine. And then the second one shows the breaking of the bond between the bromine and the bromine to form a bromide ion. So drawing the intermediates for this uh, reaction, it would have probably been better to have chosen a molecule that wasn't so hard to draw as this, but it gets you thinking, and that's key. So from here, what we have now is we've got an H there, we've got an H there, and a Br there, and also have a Br down there. So this Br has a negative charge because you saw the pair of electrons in the bromine bromine bond uh, be pushed onto that bromine, so it's now a bromide ion. And you've also formed a carbon cation because this has only got three bonds to the carbon, and you've also lost this electron pair from the double bond here because it's formed a new bond with the other bromine atom. So what can happen here is you get the negative bromide ion reacting with the positive carbocation. The lone, uh, the lone pair of electrons on the bromide attacks that positive charge, forming a new bond. And what you end up with is this wonderful molecule here. I say wonderful, it's a nightmare. Da -da. H, B, R, B, R, H, okay? So you end up with this molecule, okay? So there's the drawing of the mechanism. Now it's also asked you to name this mechanism, okay? So you've got to think about what's actually occurred if you want to name it. So yes, you can see that you've got an electrophile, okay? So this bromine molecule here is an electrophile because it is accepting uh, an electron pair from the alkene. And this electrophile has been added to the alkene molecule. So this is what is known as an electrophilic addition reaction. So that's the name of the uh, let me draw that underline. So that's the name of the uh, of the reaction mechanism. So where do your marks go? So, you get one mark for the name of the mechanism. If you've got electrophilic addition, you get a mark for that. You get a mark for the dipoles on the bromine. So, one mark for dipoles. You get a mark for these two arrows here. So, one mark for those two arrows there. You get a mark for this curly arrow here and the intermediate structure. So, one mark for curly arrow and intermediate structure correct. And you get a mark for the correct product structure. And if I can do basic maths, that should add up to five. So yes, one, one for those first two curly arrows, one for the dipoles, one mark for the curly arrow and the intermediate structure correct in this stage here, and then one mark for the name of the mechanism and one mark for the correct product structure. So that's how to do question two.